When we last saw the 533 Tiny Trainer, I had been practicing for a race. I had crashed it by hitting a gate and the flight controller stopped working. It's not entirely true. The, the OSD stopped working. The flight controller is still working. Uh, but without an OSD, <laughs> I don't think we can all agree, life's not worth living. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> and I have been over this flight controller to try and see if there's a solder blob or some other thing that is causing it to not work and it just seems like it has died. And unfortunately, that is all too freaking common for these freaking Beta FPV uh, F405 toothpick, whatever the frick. You know, it's so good too. It's so well laid out, but it just freaking died. And that's happened more times than I'm comfortable with. So my rule of thumb is if you have a product that dies two or three times on you, abandon it and just buy something else. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be putting this Flywoo Goku GN745 40 amp ESC and F7 in my tiny trainer. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The product you're about to see me review, the Flywood Goku GN745, was purchased by me with my own money. I have not received any compensation of any form in exchange for making this video, and nobody has had any editorial control or approval over the contents of this video. As I begin to desolder all the parts from the current flight controller, I feel like I should speak a little more about my philosophy about, you know, replacing uh, parts and here's the thing that we struggle with in this hobby it's really hard to know when you have a, a component fail whether that's just bad luck I mean like nothing has a 100% uh, success rate nothing has a 0% defect rate right it's impossible so any product you can buy a freaking you could buy a freaking brand new car and maybe you got a lemon, right? That this happens. So when you get a product, I mean, how do you decide? How do you decide, right? And one way you decide is based on the history of the company. Some companies have a better reputation than others, a better track record for delivering products that are consistently high quality. Uh, like for example, um, you know, Hobby Wing is known for making very good ESCs. Acon is known for making very good ESCs. If I bought an Acon ESC and like, you know, on my first flight, I fried a motor or I fried the ESC, I probably would buy another one, right? Well, Beta FPV doesn't quite have that reputation, do they? They, uh, you know, they're not the worst, but they definitely don't have, let's say, an unimpeachable reputation. So my philosophy is, like I said, I buy the product, and if it dies, maybe I give it a second chance. Maybe I even give it a third chance if it's a particularly desirable product or, you know, there's not a good alternative. But then at some point I just go, look, I don't know if it's you, I don't know if it's me, it's clearly not working out. I'm gonna see other people, <laughs> right? And you know, I've had people, I, 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 I'm not invulnerable to that. Uh, there was a time period when my flight controller, my F4 flight controller, not the F7 that I've got now, thankfully, uh, but my F4 flight controller went through a period where there was a bad 9-volt regulator. Uh, it was a manufacturing problem. R Race day quads replaced every single one that they, you know, when people reached out and said, hey, the 9-volt nine nine regulator died, they replaced them. But there were some people who emailed me and said, listen, dude, this is the third one. <laughs> I'm not buying your flight controller anymore. And I was like, hey, I can't really blame you. Good luck with wherever you end up. <laughs> I would do the same thing. Um, I didn't feel great about it, but, you know. 
So, so bye bye, Beta FPV F405. I don't know if it's you or if it's me, but this is a you know second or third time I've had one of these just for no freaking reason. And I'm gonna try some. Well, no, no. Why did I settle on this Flywoo Goku GN745? Does it have like a great reputation? I don't know. I really don't. But somebody in my comments said, I've been using them and they're pretty good for me. And I was like, hey, good enough for me. Um, <laughs> let's try it. And so the great cycle of wasting money starts again. Because maybe, I mean, but I suffer so you don't have to. Maybe. Just going to buy it. I'm going to put it on here. And, you know, if in three months it's still working, I'm going to go, hey, this one's, this is the one I'm currently using. Hasn't let me down yet. You'll tell me down in the comments. Oh, no, I bought one of those and it died for no reason. By the way, let's talk about for no reason. It died for no reason. Some people are better builders than others, right? Can we just acknowledge that? So sometimes when it dies for no reason, it actually died because you built it wrong or you screwed it up. If you're a new builder and you have, you know, you kind of don't know how to solder and, you know, other such things, and like your 30SC dies right out of the gate, well, it could be you. You always got to maybe get a friend to get a little more experience to take a look at your build and see. They're like, oh, no, this is you, buddy. Mm. These all-in-one, these toothpicks are such a pain. Like, <sighs> so painful when you have to rebuild one. So I should save that. Oh, mm. ooh, XD60. Ambitious. Somebody is feeling ambitious. Should save these. These are great little containers for odds and ends. I don't know if we're going to go with this capacitor. Uh, generally, if it comes with a capacitor, I use the capacitor. Um, number one, I think it's going to be difficult to fit a capacitor into this build. But number two, uh, for these small motors, I mean, this is like a 40 amp ESC. So, I mean, in theory, it could be used with a much larger quad. But for these little three inch, maybe I think it's not going to be necessary. I don't know. I'll take a look when it goes back together at whether it seems like I'll be able to fit that in. So one annoying thing is there are no labels on these pads. Uh, there's no silk screen labels. I guess that's to save space. I mean, they've got a lot of pads crammed in there. It does come with a printed pinout diagram. Yeah, so that's good. In fact, before we start building this up, let's just take a look at what this flight controller's got, and we'll just sort of call this video a review of this flight controller. Specs of the flight controller include an F7 processor, a MPU 6000 gyro, that's the best one a lot of people consider it to be anyway. Uh, we're going to see if that keeps being true now that there's a global chip shortage. The MPU 6000 has been officially end of life for like five plus years, basically as long as I've been in this hobby, but they just kept making it. But now that there have been supply chain disruptions and so forth, I wonder if we're going to finally see the MPU 6000 die. Anyway, for now, it's got an MPU 6000, has a freaking barometer on board. If you're trying to do INAV or something, I mean, I'm not even sure if there is an INAV target for this. I would bet that there is because Flywoo, uh, there, I could just look. Let's just put it on screen, put some text on screen. I would bet there there is because Flywoo has, uh, you know, all those Flywoo Explorer and stuff, uh, long range flight controllers. Um, uh, let's see, seven hardware UARTs, very good, especially for a toothpick controller. Nine volt, 1.5 amps, respectable. Five volt, two amps, very respectable. Yeah. 40 amp BL Heli 32 ESC, very nice. Can be doing uh, a lot of these toothpick flight controllers have BL Heli S ESC, so they won't do, uh, they, they won't as easily do bi directional D shot or other such features. Of course, you can do with, uh, with different firmware, but um, very nice. It's going to support those features out of the box. Super cool. As far as the board layout goes, let's see what we got here. So they're doing double rows of pins. 
So we've got this outside sort of edge row and then this inner row, and that's one way they're getting all these pins, all these seven UARTs or whatever on such a little toothpick flight controller. A lot of times you'll see people, uh, the designers will have to make compromises because they just won't have space to take advantage of everything that the flight controller ha could potentially offer. Let's see, we've got, there's UART1, TX1, and RX1, TX4, and RX4, TX3, and RX3. So we got three UARTs right here. Uh, it looks like no matter what you're doing, you are going to be soldering to these edge pins. Um, they got the TX on one side and the RX on the inside. Uh, if you were if you were a little hesitant to solder to those for some reason, maybe uh, you're going to be out of luck there. Mm, got five volts ground and 3.3 volts. Very nice. So we got 3.3 volts and five volts here. Presumably that's for the receiver. Uh, because some spectrum receivers require 3.3 volts. You can also use that 3.3 volts for a GPS unit. Most GPS units are happier run off of 3.3 volts, even if they can take 5 volts. Uh, they'll be a little, run a little cleaner on 3.3 volts. There are some exceptions, like, for example, some of the Maytech uh, GPS units have a built-in voltage regulator, and you actually run them off of 7 volts. But if, you're, if your GPS says 3.3 to 5 volts, run it off 3.3 volts. Most of the time it'll do a little bit better. Here is our SDA and SCL pads. If you're gonna do a GPS with a compass, a UART here, five volts in ground, and another UART, and another UART. Yeah, very nice. VTX header here. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Motor pads, very nice, big uh, main power pads. Uh, so you can put, it comes with a 14 gauge uh, yes, 14 gauge XT60 plug. So if you were gonna do this on a slightly larger uh, quadcopter, you certainly could. Um, we got some extra motor outputs here. Holy crap, eight motor outputs? You could, could you really run an octocopter off of this? Wow. Those are just signal, oh, but those are just, ah, those are just signal outputs though. Those are not actually power outputs. So you would need a PDB uh, and another ESC but it's got eight signal outputs. That's always great. I always like to see extra motor outputs on a flight controller, even if I'm only gonna be running a quadcopter, because in a pinch, you can remap those to some other function, and it's, it's, it's just nice having those in your back pocket. And that might have some people wondering, wait a minute, I thought you said there were seven UARTs. Where's that seventh UART? I didn't see it. Yeah, it looks like UART seven is used internally for ESC telemetry between the ESC and the flight controller. So you actually only have six usable UARTs but yikes, uh, you could, that's, that's plenty. And they also give you suggested settings for the UARTs, but of course, this being an F7 processor, you can use any UART for any function that you want. You don't have to use these exact UARTs the way that they're described here. It's just a suggested layout. Okay, well, let's get to work. Mm, oh, I see. We do have a capacitor here. So um, when you can't easily put a capacitor on the flight controller or the ESC, one workaround that many people do is to put the capacitor on the battery plug. Uh, having it at the end of the wire does reduce its effectiveness. I saw one test where it was approximately half as effective when it was at the end of the plug versus directly on the ESC, but still better than nothing. I was just thinking how cool it would be to be able to wire this video transmitter directly to my Immersion RC Ghost receiver, which would let me control the video transmitter through the Ghost system instead of through the Betaflight flight controller. Unfortunately, I can't do that because this is a TBS video transmitter and the Ghost system only interfaces with Tramp video transmitters. But if you want to know more about why that's so freaking cool and how to set it up, I've got a link down in the video description to a video. In addition, if you want to know, like, What's this three inch tiny trainer? How could you train with a three inch to fly a five inch? I've got a review of this quadcopter and a build tutorial for this quadcopter. I'll put all links to all that stuff down in the video description if you're interested. Yeah, these pads are very small for the size of this soldering iron head. What can you do? You could use a smaller soldering iron head. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five from the edge. Oof, there are some tiny little resistors right here that would be so easy to mess up. 
if I was not super careful with my soldering iron. You see them? You can barely see them. These tiny resistors right there. One little swipe of the soldering iron and they are, the whole flight controller is probably. All right, next the receiver. And for the receiver, we are gonna use this pad here. Whenever you see a flight controller with a pad labeled 4V5, that's the five volt pad for the receiver. And uh, the difference between the 4V5 pad and the five volt pad is that the 4V5 pad is gonna power up from USB, so you can easily bind your receiver without having to plug a LiPo in. Uh, why do they call it 4V5? The actual answer is that they use a diode to prevent the USB port from powering up the rest of the quad. So it doesn't power up like your unified video transmitter and so forth. It could draw too much current. And that diode causes a tiny bit of voltage drop. So you only, so on the five volt pad, you only get like 4.5 volts. Anyway, so we're gonna use this 4V5 pad here for our ghost receiver. So we got 3.3 volt, five volt ground and TX3. It's gonna be those three. All right, moment of truth. Should probably use a smoke stopper, huh? It's a good idea. This is the V-Fly Short Saver. It's an electronic smoke stopper. You want to know more about why this is an essential piece of kit? You know where the link is. It's down in the video description. It won't protect from every kind of failure, but it protects from some of them. Fingers crossed. <clears throat> I think we're on race eight. We usually are. Dang. Oh, dang. Why no camera? Why no camera? Hmm. Hmm. 3.3 volts, huh? Why 3.3 volts? I thought I soldered it to 5 volts. My bad. These are the I2C pads, the edge launch ones are the camera pads. That's my mistake. Well, while I fix that problem, uh, I'll let you go and I'll wrap up this video. Um, this is the Flywoo Goku GN 7045, 745 all-in-one 40 amp. Uh, it's a BL Heli 32 uh, ESC 40 amp nominally rated, although I wouldn't run it on like a a big sixes, you know, five inch quad, it'll probably blow. But um, I'm hoping that it will be over spec for this kind of application and will have a little more reliability. No way to know that for sure. So I, I wouldn't say I'm endorsing this because for all I know, it's gonna blow up. I'll get back to you in a couple months maybe and, and complain about it. But now you know it exists and frankly, in this day and age, that's saying something. Am I original? choice was to get the iFlight Beast. iFlight Beast F7, like 60 amp rated or something. I was just going to get the most powerful flight controller I could to just be like, okay, now you won't die. And iFlight does make pretty good quality stuff. It was out of stock everywhere. A as of the time you're seeing this, it might not be. Things are going into and out of stock like crazy right now with the chip shortage and everything. So <sighs> what can you do? Link in the video description if you decide to pick one up for yourself. I'll be fine. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.